Hurricane Melissa is one of the slowest moving hurricanes we have ever tracked, creeping at just under 3 miles per hour. That snail pace gives Melissa time to linger, to squeeze every drop of rain, every gust of wind, every surge of the sea over our land. And that means real danger. In this video, we'll explain what is causing the slow movement, why that makes hurricanes much more dangerous, and exactly what you, fisher folk, farmers, government agencies, and utility services must do right now. Because this storm doesn't wait. If you find videos like these interesting or informative, then you can give this video a thumbs up. Storms that crawl kill differently. When a hurricane stalls or moves slowly, it doesn't just zip past, it stays. That means one area gets hammered again and again. Researchers have shown that tropical cyclones today are moving markedly slower than they did decades ago. One study found that since 1949, the average forward speed of tropical cyclones has dropped by about 10%. In the North Atlantic, that figure is closer to 20%. Now, why does that matter, you may ask? Because the slower the motion, the longer the rain falls over the same spot. For example, the infamous Hurricane Harvey stalled over southeast Texas in 2017 for days. It dumped over 60 inches of rain in some places. That's more than 5 feet of water in less than a week. Now apply that to Jamaica. With just 3 miles per hour movement, Melissa could linger over the same parishes for hours or even days. The rain won't just fall, it will collect, saturate and overwhelm. Rivers will swell and gullies will turn into torrents. Our hillsides will shed everything in landslides. Houses won't just get it they'll be battered repeatedly. This is not a wind story only. This is a rain and flood story. A slow-moving hurricane is far more dangerous than one racing through. So why is Melissa moving so slowly? Several meteorological factors, weak steering currents in the atmosphere, a lack of frontal systems to push the storm along, and unusually warm Caribbean waters giving the storm strength while keeping it nearly stationary. For instance, media reports say Melissa is moving at just 3 miles per hour, slower than a person walking. By overing, it allows massive rainfall accumulation in one place. For example, on a plot showing rainfall potential, Storms moving at 5 miles per hour can generate over 30 inches of rain in the same region. And that's compounded when geography joins the danger. Jamaica's mountainous terrain means water doesn't sit nicely. It runs off fast, cuts gullies, and triggers landslides. So the storm's slow motion gives it a deadly advantage. It stays and delivers the worst of everything. Think of it this way. While faster storms spread their energy across many areas, a slow-moving one focuses all its energy on your neighborhood. It picks you. It lingers. It delivers the damage. Everything is lining up. Our rivers and reservoirs are already near capacity after recent rainfall. Many of our drainage systems, especially in rural areas, are aging and clogged. 
coastal communities in Jamaica face the triple threat of rainfall, storm surge, and wave action. If Melissa stalls near the coast are over land, low-lying parishes like St. Thomas, Portland, or St. Mary become extremely vulnerable. Imagine every rainfall for 24 to 36 hours, hillsides giving way, rivers overflowing, roads washed out, bridges collapsing, when the 1979 hurricane moved slowly over Jamaica's west, Westmoreland Parish recorded 32 inches of rain in one location, and major crop and infrastructure damage resulted. Now scale that up, a bigger, stronger system, longer rain, more saturated ground, more risk. Port Royal, Bull Bay, Anato Bay, these aren't just names on a map, they could become flashpoints. This isn't a maybe scenario. It's a all prepared are you scenario. And again, yes, wind will be destructive. Roofs will be ripped. Trees will fall. Power lines will go down. But history tells us water kills more than wind. And remember, Slow movement means the rain doesn't just stop in one burst and move on. It lingers, it saturates the soil, the ground gives way, and that river that is usually calm becomes a wall of water. When you hear about rainfall totals of just 15 to 20 inches, understand, in Jamaican terrain, that's enough to destroy roads, wash out bridges, isolate communities. If Melissa gives us 30 inches or more in spots, then we are talking historic proportions. We have stood up to hurricanes before. Jamaica is resilient, but this time may be different. The combination of slow motion, heavy rainfall, saturated ground, and vulnerable infrastructure puts us at a crossroads. If Melissa lands with full force, we won't just be repairing roofs, we'll be rebuilding communities. Our economy could take years to recover. Agriculture destroyed, power grids down, tourism interrupted. The cost won't just be measured in dollars, it'll be measured in lives lost and futures derailed. When Hurricane Gilbert hit in 1988, it caused massive damage and pain. But that was a fast-moving storm in comparison. This one has time on its side. And that makes it far more dangerous. We are not talking about damage we have seen before. We are talking about damage we haven't yet seen. And the window to prepare is closing. Fisher folk. Your sea is your livelihood, and also your greatest danger now. Secure your vessels well inland or in safe harbors. Remove or fasten loose items. Avoid being underwater even for just a quick check. Storm surge combined with slow movement could raise sea levels dramatically and trap boats at sea. Farmers, harvest what you can now. Protect livestock by moving them to higher ground or sturdy shelter. Secure farm equipment. Drain low-lying fields if you can. Historically, slow-moving storms have washed out crops and destroyed years of work, not just from wind, but from persistent rainfall and flooding. Regular citizens, know your evacuation route and nearest shelter, especially if you live near rivers, for example Yalas, Wagwata, or Rio Cobre, are in valleys that feed gullies. In the next 24 to 48 hours, charge phones, power banks, and radios. Store water in containers. Secure the roof and windows now. Once the storm begins, contractors and materials may be unavailable. Prepare food that doesn't require refrigeration. Fill bathtubs and buckets with water. Municipal supply may be lost. 
Do not assume the supermarket will meet all your needs. Clean out areas and slopes. Trim loose branches. Remove debris from gutters. A slow storm will test every weak point. For government agencies, Office of Disaster Preparedness Emergency Management, preposition supplies, for example, water, food, and medical in vulnerable parishes. Ensure shelters are stocked and accessible. Jamaica Public Service Company, ensure backup repair crews are ready. Fuel for generators secured. Evacuation of heavy equipment pre-planned. National Water Commission, secure pumping stations. Protect critical water infrastructure. Pre-plan for outages or contamination. Ensure gullies and drains are cleared. Every minute counts. Leaving it too late means when rain begins, water will find new paths into homes, roads, and schools. This is not about buying things at the last minute. It's about strategic, targeted preparation. Slow-moving storms test preparedness like no other. When Melissa is about to strike, these are the must-do actions. Charge all devices, phones, radios, power banks. Communication will save lives. Turn off the main breaker. If flooding begins and the electricity is still live, risk of fire and electrocution rises. Fill containers with water and store extra. Even if supply holds at first, it may fail later. Cook now, or at least prepare food that doesn't need refrigeration. Power loss might come early. Secure house and property. Tie down everything loose outside. Furniture, tools, and bins. The wind won't just lift things, it will carry them like missiles. Stay indoors once the winds begin. And also remember, the calm of the eye is not the end. Many lives are lost when people venture outside during the pause, only for the backside of the storm to it. Avoid driving through floodwaters. Even 12 inches of moving water can carry away a small car. Two feet can carry away most vehicles. Final hours aren't when you start worrying. They are when you act decisively. When the storm has passed, don't breathe easy as yet. This is when unseen threats emerge. Down the power lines in flood waters, deadly combination. Contaminated water from burst mains and flood waters means disease risk mounts. Unstable ground, landslides don't stop just because the rain does. Hillsides weakened by hours of rain can collapse days later. Roads may have been washed out beneath the surface. Driving could kill. Slow-moving storms often leave the worst part after the wind stops. Weeks of recovery, outages, and hardship. Remember, after the storm, you'll be vulnerable. Food, water, power, access. Yet, your normal world is gone for a while. Hurricane Melissa is more than a meteorological event. It's a test of our nation's readiness, our collective strength, our resilience. We have rebuilt after storms before, but this one has a different script. We are not just repairing roofs, we are rebuilding lives. If you are listening right now, act. Don't wait for the wind. Don't wait for the rain. Nature is warning us. Prepare your homes. Protect your family, help your neighbors, and remember, only those who are ready will survive. Because when the sky turns black and the wind begins to scream, it won't matter who you are or where you are from. Only those who are prepared will stand. Thank you for watching and take heed.